Which one do you prefer, Daisy? Hello, so while Daisy's having her treats, I thought there's some treats in store for us. So I've got two new pairs of shoes today. I've got a new pair of Next Percent, but I've also got the Alpha Flyer. So I'm going to do a bit of a shoe off test. I'm going to go for a two mile circuit from home, starting the Next Percent. I'll switch over to the Alpha Fly and I'll go back to the Next Percent and then finish the Alpha Flyer and let's see if I can see any difference. Okay, let's get into the shoes. So before we start, quick weigh in 302 grams there in the left shoe of the Alpha Fly. Now, oddly, the right shoe comes up 306, so it's four grams heavier. So this next percent is 246, and also 246 in the right. Huge difference in weight there between the Alpha Fly and the next percent. So will I notice that on foot? Okay, so we put the next percents on, and we're ready to go. I think I'll do a little, uh, just a short little warm up, just to get my legs going before I get into this two mile run. And here are these next percent with my coordinated yellow socks. So this is now the fourth pair of Next Percents that I've actually worn. And I've still got two more in a box ready to go. I, originally I got a UK 12 because that's all I could find. And then fortunately they did a 13. So that's a better, better sizing for me. So these are all 13s today. So hello, back from the next first Next Percent run. And that was a bit quicker than I intended actually. It's sort of striding out quite well. So I think I did, let's look at the watch, 624 pace for two miles. The, my actual route is about 2.1. So time overall, 13.28 uh, from door to door on the loop. So that's about 2.1 miles. What I'm going to do is also going to use the race, uh, racing activity on the Garmin so I can actually measure my effort to the nearest second, hopefully, as I'm going around. So we'll get real time pacing from that run. So the idea of this one is to try and keep these two sets the same speed. And if I feel, if I feel all right, I might increase the speed on the last two. See, and then compare the same again. Right, let's get these shoes on then. Now, a top tip from Ed Bar to get Alpha Flies on is that you need a shoehorn. Unfortunately, I couldn't find one, so this is going to be interesting. So let's see how we get. Comparison of widths when we're here. And yeah, definitely, I don't know if you can see that. Next percent is definitely a narrower last. Yeah, in terms of the actual black rubber surface contact, that's about half a centimeter thinner. they're on they then feel a bit looser bizarrely <sighs> how's the lockdown now actually that's yeah there's not really much room there a lot of room there i can pitch uh, right down so alpha flies on so just walk around the garden oh, they do feel a bit looser i must say so i hope this is going to be uh okay for me I can feel a bit under the arch as well, it's interesting. So I'm going to go straight into these running at uh, about 6, 6.24 paces at the aim for. Um, so certainly a baptism of fire. Right, let's get this going and we'll see you later. Bye! So I'm back from the run with the Alpha Flies. Well, that was a weird feeling actually. They feel more, um, certainly feel a lot feel more clumpy. They feel a bit wide for me slightly, just very slightly, just to feel a bit of room at the front there. So I felt like I was slightly moving side to side a bit. I don't think I've got any issues, but um, certainly that uh, so run was actually about 13 seconds quicker than the first one. Maybe that was partly because I just had a faster start down a little slightly downhill section. I think from then, my times were about four seconds apart. It certainly felt like I was moving pretty well in them. Uh, you could certainly feel that sort of forefoot airbag sort of pushing you forward. It felt like I was hardly touching the back of the shoes at all. One thing I did notice, which I would not notice with the both the four percent and the next percent, occasionally I just clip my ankles because they're, they're so big and clumpy. These shoes. Um, and then we're stripped over at one side. Cornerings, uh, okay-ish, because I'm not completely locked down. Um, did feel a bit dicey, but maybe the second time I'll be able to lace them up a bit more and uh, see how we go. Right, so now I'm going to switch back to the next percent. I'm going to try and run that slightly quicker I can. Although that was, those first two runs were a bit harder than I was going to, but they were about 6.20 pace, 6.24 on the first one. So I can see if I get these a bit nearer to six minute pace, more to say sort of 5k 10k speed just to get a bit of a comparison and just come into this last run with the alpha fly after this next run pretty tired to see how well it can last me for those last uh, two miles right let's get these next percent shoes back on and out we go again okay run done in the next percent that was a lot quicker a lot harder as well i was really pretty much uh 
I'm not sure I was full out there, but I was pretty close to it. So just outside six minute pace for my 2.1 miles, um, a good 30 seconds quicker than the uh, two previous runs. So I'm going to go into this last run on very, very tired legs. And let's see how the Alpha Fly does. When I put the next percent on, what I instantly noticed is the next percent, bizarrely for a very soft Zoomix shoe, felt a lot firmer. And they also felt more locked down. I think I, I did tie the loose, uh, shoelaces up a bit after my first run in them. So that might have helped a bit. So we'll see if I can accommodate my foot a bit better into the uh, Alphalize this time. We really need to uh, push this one to uh, keep up that six minute pace. At least it's the last one. Right, let's get them on and get going. Right, so we're all uh, Alphalized up. And notice I kind of feel the far carbon plate so much in these Alphalize. Maybe it's because of all the cushioning because you've got the Zoom airbags and then you've got the Zoom X, haven't you? So you've got so much cushioning here. But let's see how we get on on this one. This is going to be uh, hard work. Right, see you in about a quarter of an hour. Bye. Okay, so we're back with the uh, Alpha Fly done. So I've done the session, did that more or less exactly the same time as the next percent. But I have to say, I thought, if anything, I prefer the next percent. Certainly that course I just did, it's fairly flat, but it has a few little gradual rises. And every time I went up the rises, I've just felt that extra 50, 60 grams that I've got on my feet in these shoes. And the fact that they're not quite as well locked down. So they did me the job and I did that on very tired legs, but I'll be interested to have a look at that heart rate data and the splits, because that felt harder, but it should have felt harder because it was the last one. It was the fourth rep on a session like that. It's going to feel tough. And there's a certain moment I was pacing myself on the previous one as well, so I knew exactly what I had to do to keep in touch. But I think I struggled to go out again. And certainly putting on the knife Alpha Fly there didn't feel like anything as amazing as the next percent did when I did my earlier shoe test last winter. So yeah, but that was certainly hard work. That was... Uh, that's probably my 10k speed there for eight miles. So the last two sets of two miles were 10k speed for sure. Right, I think what I'll do now is I'll do a little warm down with one shoe on, one foot. I think I'll keep my right alpha fly on and I'll put the left next percent on, just do a jog around the block to bottom this out. Oh, it's very difficult to run with one of each on because they're a different stack height. <laughs> it feels like I'm sort of <laughs> running on a camber. Hello, I'm back indoors now. I've had time to digest all this data and put it into my usual spreadsheet. So just a quick reminder of what we did. We did four runs of 2.11 miles each around a virtually circular course from, from my house. And we started off in a brand new pair of Next Percents in the UK 13. And then we went for my very first run in the Alpha Fly, also in the UK 13. Uh, approximately the same sort of effort level as in those two. And in the next two, I upped the pace and did the next percent and then finished with the Alpha Fly. So as you can see, the times there for the first two were fairly similar. I was slightly faster in the Alpha Fly. Interesting though, the heart rate on the second run was a lot higher than the first run. I think that partially reflects the fact that that first run was... Although it was sort of comfortable pace, my cadence there was only 181. Felt like I was striding out quite well in those shoes. That was still quite a hard effort. That was faster than my half marathon time I did in January. So that's you know, certainly not hanging about. And when I put the Alpha Flies on, that was also the very first time I'd worn them. And I was already coming out with a bit of tired legs. But even so, all the other tests I've done, when I put the next percent on, usually I showed some sort of decrease in heart rate. So it wasn't the case this time. I was certainly having to work for that. So when I move on to the third run, the next percent, I deliberately run that as not quite as hard as I possibly could, but certainly at a fair effort. And I think by the end, I was felt like that was getting about as fast as I could muster on the evening. So I was quite pleased with that time, actually, to be, that's pretty much exactly my 10K race pace for the last runner, proper one, in the times when we could still race. And got a 141 heart rate average with a 148 maximum. And that equates to current max of 160. So that's certainly that's certainly working very hard. That's often the sort of heart rates I typically see in 5 and 10k races. And it wasn't that warm that evening. I was wearing a, a t-shirt rather than a sort of a singlet because um, it was a bit chilly in, in the air. And so when I came to put on the Alpha Fly, I deliberately tried to run as close to that time as possible using race the race and activity uh, feature on the Garmin to give you the real-time pacing. But you can see there, interestingly, that the heart rate's pretty much identical. But as I said, before I previously put the next percents on, I also felt I had a huge lift in them. Whereas these Alpha Flies, I felt like that wasn't really the case. And maybe there's an element of getting used to them. But certainly what I found, the biggest thing I found was that the fact that they're 50, 60 grams heavier in my size meant that on this course, which isn't completely flat, every time I went up a slight, slight rise, I felt like I was certainly having to work a bit harder. 
So having a quick browse at the other data, we see that the cadence was very similar on both sets of runs, the slightly slower one, identical 181. And as I was going a bit faster, as naturally happens, my cadence went up a bit to 185. That's all pretty what I would expect for those sort of paces. And the ground contact time reduced slightly, slightly less than the alpha fly maybe. Not quite sure I can explain that as yet, but um, not, not a huge difference, but maybe something to look into. The first oscillation is how much you sort of bob up and down. I think when I was sort of, the first ones, when I was sort of trying to stride out a bit more, maybe I sort of like was naturally just bouncing off the ground a bit more, with slightly slower cadence. Um, I was sort of going for it more, a bit more, maybe my form was a bit worse and I was just trying to, uh, as I usually do, my cadence goes up. And my, uh, I just run as, as, as best as I can. I added in this uh, ground contact time balance, which is basically an indication of how well, how even you are. And uh, obviously even would be 50-50. I think they say that if it's in the range 48 to 52 either side, that's perfectly normal. So I think all of those ones were fine. Doesn't suggest I've got any major issues at the moment, which is good. And if we look at some of the splits here, the first mile is probably slightly easy because there's a bit, a bit of the biggest downhill bit in the middle and then it rises up again at the end. So I think typically I was seeing here the times in the second mile when I was going for it just a fractionally slower. Maybe also the element I was getting quite tired by then. Anyway, I think that all indicates that I was running these two sets at a reasonably even pace. So. On this, on this first test alone, I would say that for me, I think I still prefer the next percent, but I think I need to do a lot more rounds in the Alpha Fly to see where they are going to shine and maybe just getting used to them because they do have a very high stack height, even more than, than the next percent. And I think, it, as you said, it, it, I think it will take a bit of getting used to. So I certainly don't think they're going to throw out my £260 of investment straight away. But whether I would actually take them into races over the next percent, I think that is an interesting choice. At the moment, I don't think I probably would. But I think I need to do more testing, as I say, and see how we go. So perhaps a slightly surprising result. I don't think the Alpha Fly are as quite as revolutionary as people made out. Maybe that's because I got such large feet and the differential for me is so much larger in, in the weight. So I think I found that with the Zoom Fly 3 and and choose like the, the Pegasus 37 with the with your act phone. But with this with the Zoom X, I wasn't expecting that quite so much. But it's gonna be a factor that weight I think definitely. So I hope you found that interesting and as usual I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Okay, bye. Daisy got some treats. Come on, Daisy, you've got some treats. I did the double lot in the next percent as well. It's how uh, locked down they are for me there. Uh, there's a bit of material there, like in the Alpha Fly. Daisy, Daisy. Daisy's coming up the rear.